Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Paint by Minis. My name's Adam and in this episode we are going to take a look at a really quick and easy way to paint a Cadian Shock Trooper. This was such a fun process coming up with a really interesting way to get a decent looking model but spending less than an hour on it. I find when you're painting big armies like Astra Militarum or Tyranids or Orcs, for the rank and file troops you really need a quick and effective way of getting them painted and on the battlefield. If you're putting in multiple hours on a single model that comes in squads of 20, the hours really add up and you're going to spend so long painting your army you're probably going to get bored of it. So if that sounds like something that would be a benefit to you, grab yourself a tea or coffee and let's get painting. So the first step of our speed painting is actually on the base. I see so many models with very minimal basing and even such a simple base can add so much to the model. And as we're looking for speed over anything else, we're going to do a very very simple but effective base. My favourite method for a quick base is using Vallejo texture paste as the main covering. This goes all over the base. Then sprinkle a few smaller stones here and there and then peel some cork apart so that it looks like small boulders or bigger stones and place a couple of these on the base. And then just grab a plastic grey primer and spray the whole model and base. Normally I'd say it doesn't matter too much which primer you use but in this instance it needs to be a grey primer. Now for our first colour, we're going to be using Pallid Witch Flesh and this is going to go onto any cloth areas of the model. Now I'm going to use an airbrush to apply this just because it's much quicker and easier. If you don't have an airbrush though, don't worry at all, we're not doing any special technique that needs an airbrush. We're just applying a smooth layer over any cloth areas. Now the layer of Pallid Witch Flesh is dried, we're going to move on to the skin tone and keeping it real simple we're just going to do the most basic skin paint job that you can do and we're going to use right and Flesh Shade and we're just going to do a couple of passes over the skin so face and hands and it's just going to give some very basic definition as that's all you really need for this basic rank and file troop. Now if you've seen any of my other previous videos you should know by now that any leather areas I like to do extremely basically and I use this Burnt Umber ink from De La Rowley and just do a light pass over any areas and it gives a very natural looking leather effect without much effort at all. So on these models all I really do is the boots and a few details around the belt area like the holsters and pouches. And now for the next main colour of the model, we're going to use Castellan Green and this is going to go over any of the armour panel areas and the main body of the gun. Now I don't know if this is just my experience, like I got a bad pot of paint, but this Castellan Green for a base paint is extremely thin and it took me a good 4 or 5 coats to get decent coverage. So it'd be really interesting to hear if you guys use the same paint as this, if yours is the same or if I just got unlucky or you know maybe it's just the way this paint is. So just be patient, do a layer, let it dry completely, do another layer. It's probably the longest part of this painting process and if I do any more of these models I'll probably look to replace this green with a different Citadel green or a Vallejo green of a similar colour. So now your 20th layer of Castellan Green has finally dried and you have a solid layer, we can move on to metallics. Again, keeping it really simple on this model, we're just going to use one basic metallic colour. But first we need to put a black base down as it doesn't go over light colours very well. So working around the model, I just paint everything in black that I want to be metallic. And then using this silver from the Metal Colour range by Vallejo, it's an airbrush paint but it covers really well. Just go over every area that you painted black. So this is how the model's looking so far. We've finished all of our opaque acrylic layers and if you really wanted to you could fill the model as it is. But we're going to take it one step further and do a oil wash over everything to really grime it up and give some definition to the shadows. This one oil step will completely transform how this model looks. And as a new painter, you really don't need to be scared of oil paints. If you do everything properly and don't do anything silly like try and mix them with water or acrylic paints, you will have no problems whatsoever. 
Even myself, I've only started using oils fairly recently as I was really apprehensive about using them, but I can honestly say they've changed the way I paint completely and I would never go back to not using them, so please give it a go if there's one thing you take away, try oils, they're so much fun. So the oil paints that I'm using today are these Windsor and Newton oil paints. These are a fairly mid-range to higher quality level of oil paints. The more you look into the world of oil, the more you'll realise that there are some really cheap oil paints out there, but there's also some extremely crazy expensive ones. Try and avoid either end of the extreme scale, don't get the most cheap, but also don't pay ridiculous money for oil paints. For context in the UK here, this small tube cost me between 3 and £4 pounds, and this big tube cost me just over £10. Pounds. The only other tools that we're going to need for today is a little metallic pot so we can mix the paints, a tacky old brush that we don't mind ruining, and some mineral or white spirit. It's also really useful to have a pipette or something similar to hand because in these big bottles of white spirit it's quite hard to get a small amount out so it's much easier to use a pipette to do the pouring. So all you need to do now is take uh, equal parts black and burnt umber oil paint and pop them into the dish that you're going to use to mix and then slowly add some mineral spirits until you get the consistency that you're after. The ideal consistency that I use is just enough white spirit to make the mixture start moving within the dish. And then it's just a simple case of applying this mixture all over the miniature and the base. So this is what we're left with after the oil step and before we remove it you just want to leave the model about an hour. This should give it enough time to let the white spirits evaporate from the model leaving just the oil layer behind. And now just using some cotton buds or q-tips whatever you call them we're just going to very slowly work them over the model and remove the very top layer of oil. What you should start noticing is that you're removing the majority of the oil but you're leaving a very thin film behind and this is going to be just enough to give it the grim dark kind of effect where it's all looking a bit muddy and a bit worn and on the cloth it's going to stain it so it's much much more of a brown tone and the base it's going to make it look like there's lots of mud there so it's done all of the work for us. So now that's done we're going to move on to the next step which is just a little final detail. You can completely skip this if you want but I find it just adds that little more visual interest to the model. So we're going to go ahead and use oils again, this time we are using just burnt umber and we're going to mix this up to be a little thinner of a consistency than we were using for the general wash. You want it so it's running much freer in the dish. And we're basically going to take this and speckle it all over the model. I find it easier to lay the model flat while I'm doing this and rotate it slowly and flick paint. I would advise putting a bit of kitchen towel or something disposable underneath because this really does get everywhere. What we're doing here is trying to simulate some dirt that's got flicked up and caught all over him. It really adds to the model and makes him look much more grounded. The best advice I can give with this is just to take it slow, do one speckle layer at a time, take the model away and have a good look. And the best thing about this is you can go back in at the very end with some mineral spirits on a brush and just rub over the areas that you think are a bit too strong. This really helps to blend everything together. Once you're happy with the speckling layer, all you need to do is a matte varnish over the top of everything just to seal all the oil layers in and make sure they don't go anywhere. And that is it, this is the finished model. All in all, the working time on this model was under an hour. Obviously there are some allowances to be made for waiting for the oil layer to dry etc. So in reality it was probably closer to two and a half, three hours, but actual hands-on working time was definitely under an hour on this model. So if you use this technique to batch paint a bunch of models, you should really crank through them much, much quicker. I hope you've enjoyed and picked up a tip or two. If you do use this technique, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below.
And before we finish, I just want to say a real big thank you to everyone. We've hit 500 subscribers and I honestly never thought we'd even get this far. So I really appreciate all your supports and all your positive comments. If you like what you see, just click the subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.